today coming out of Penrith Park and a real crunch match as Penrith takes on Parramatta. It goes from Zabanovic through Izzard and Lee and through Alexander and uh, Wolf got the ball back to uh, Alexander. A flick pass to Connor, given over now to Gonzalez. Inside to Ross Gig, they're going to score. The Panthers are in for the first try. Mara holding it up. Oh, Lydia, he's got him fouled. Wolf's picked up the loose, uh, the loose ball and he's off. He'll run over the railway line and he keeps going. Bomb put up by Mara. A test for Penrith. Try. That's Gary Howe now, getting a handoff to Simmons. Simmons, I think he might have ferreted his way across. He has. Barry Barnes has given the try to the Penrith skipper. Yes, fond memories indeed for the Panthers, and hoping to repeat the dose tonight. Penrith's team is Mark Levy, Brett Lobb, Ross Gig, Ken Wolf, and Ben Gonzalez. And they take on Paul Taylor, Neil Hunt, Michael Cronin, Steve Ella, and Eric Groth. Robinson and Alexander of the Penrith halves. Quinn and Sterling will go in there for Parramatta. Izzard, Clements, Fenton, War, Simmons and Goodwin have the job of containing Price, Muggled and Wynn, Mayers, Edge and Jer. Tim Sheens having a most successful year with Penrith is the coach up here and Parramatta under the guidance of John Money. Kevin Roberts in charge of this match. The local derby between the Panthers and the Eels. The Panthers only need to win, and they're in the semi finals for the first time ever. Cronin sends it straight down to Levy, playing against his old club today. In fact, there's been a lot of transactions between these two clubs. Gonzalez. Brett War. And the charge down. Levy's kick has been charged down. Oh, that was a good cover up by Izzard. That was well done by Brad Izzard. It was also a very good marker defence by Parramatta. Well, Billy Anderson, it's certainly a, a crunch match for the Panthers. Yes, the lure of making the semi-finals would certainly make them very resolute, but they've got a lot of work to do before that becomes a reality. Neil Hunt. Peter Wynn. Parramatta's second row of Muggleton and Wynn bears the resemblance of a lot of attack. Cronin, Edge can't handle, knock backwards. No, it's a knock on, he said. So the scrum is about 15 metres out from the Penrith line, right in front. Levy. Good one, Clements. Jern around the legs in 13. As far as television audiences are concerned, it's the reappearance today for Stan Jurd. And I would think a question mark over uh, Muggleton and Sharp as opposed to one another as to whether this is the top parameter side. Of course, I'm not taking into account Brett Kenny. This forward pack is probably the one they would use at the cricket ground through the finals if Muggleton comes through today. Here's Taylor. Taylor getting his head jerked back and uh, Brad Izzard's not 100%, let me tell you. Neither's Paul Taylor for that matter. Robert says play on, but Izzard's a sick and sorry boy. So is Taylor. Good pass by Quinn. And Ella's got through one. He's almost through a second. He'll play at 15 out. They're only on the second tackle, the Eels, but already... They've highlighted some deficiencies in the, uh, the Penrith line. Stan Jordan now plays it back to Stephen Edge. A decoy to the open, back to the blind. Up the middle goes Wynn. And Wynn is about eight metres out. That's four tackles gone. 
Roberts scurries into position adjacent to the play the ball. Taylor holds one back, stands, looks to give it to Ella. But that's five gone. Taylor taps it ahead, goes himself, the little man, gets a hand off away to Quinn. Quinn can't handle, and it's going to be forced in goal. But the referee is ruling that the ball was lost in the field of play, and he'll put a five-metre scrum down. One of the things that had been suggested prior to the start of the game was that uh, Penrith had everything to play for, and really Parramatta are playing oh, for... Oh, uh, dear, did you see that feed, Bill? That, that was a good feed. <laughs> You're kidding. Parramatta are playing uh, for no improvement in their position. They're going to finish second or third in the competition, but they haven't the started the game like that. They started very enthusiastically. This is Kenny Wolfe making a good run down the left touch line after some good hands inside. Let me have a look at Izzard. He's all right. Levy's pass is a good one out to Clements. Clements really is a Parramatta discard. We've only seen him twice before the television cameras. He's done very, very well. And the Panthers throw it about as Alexander floats a pass out. That's six more tackles to mine. And the Panthers are really attacking. They're inside the 32. Gonzalez, he's up to the 22 line. Inside for his wing three-quarter partner, Brett Lobb. Lobb's tackled. The crowd is roaring. The Panthers, they know what this is all about today. It's gone on through Robinson to Gig. Flicked inside the Levy. Spread across the Robinson. Onto Alexander. Oh, he beat Cronin so easily. 15 metres out from the perimeter line. Five tackles gone. Simmons. Great little hooker captain. Ah, oh, Taylor. Magnificent. Line drop out to restart it. This breeze is blowing in the same direction as the one last Sunday. Uh, here's Levy. Well, he made the 32-metre line, but what worries me is that Parramatta had one defenceman up there. That was Paul Mayers, and he's just made a double of it. He's gone for a double and got it. But there wasn't anybody else within Cooey. This is war. Yes, the breeze is blowing from behind Parramatta, from behind the... Oh, Izzard, if he had it held, that ball was a chance. It's blowing from uh, the wing where Neil Hunt is, if you like, diagonally down to the wing occupied by Ben Gonzalez. Sterling to feed, feed across the tunnel, won by Parramatta, Quinn to the open side. I, I wonder how he'll go with... Cronin alongside in this fellow, Ron Quinn. He's been an able deputy, but I can't recall having seen him play inside Michael Cronin, his uh, travel mate, if I can use that expression. Well, as a 5'8", if you've got Michael Cronin outside, you, all you need to do really is pass him back up. Well, that's a pass that he didn't have to throw to ground and played by Lobb and spread to uh, Simmons. It's gone to Matt Goodwin, tall, rangy, tough. Pulled down by Price. Alexander was standing on the blind. He's run to the open, but Muggledon's there, together with Jurd. It's a real, a desert, if you like, a desert Penrith Park at the moment, as is a couple of our other grounds. It's gone out to Levy. Jurd is down injured. It's come across to Gig. He stops, and he seems to have an, an immense amount of time to do what he likes, and this is back to Fenton, who I think today is playing 100 for the, uh, for the Panthers. In first grade. Last week was his 100th. I'm sorry, this is his uh, 100, 101st game, I suppose. The reason for the announcement was the home crowd, the home ground uh, getting their chance to give him what he rightfully deserves. Penrith attacking, Gig, Robinson. You've got to watch him win, getting it away, uh, trying to get a high tackle on. You have got to watch him, but he should have let that one go. Penrith had extras on the right-hand side, and he elected to turn it back in. Good cut-out pass by Simmons, but it was uh, an equally good tackle by Quinn, taking Clements to ground. This is War in the number 11, and around the bootlaces was Paul Taylor. Price coming over the top. To the left, it goes through Robinson on Levy, the run around for Robinson, and then he gets it back to uh, Wolf. And Wolf is tackled just outside the 22, and Jurd is not 100%. Knock on in the scrum. Jurd's been nursing uh, a problem there for about three or four minutes. Huge crowd here today. 
I wouldn't be surprised if the record has been uh, broken. It's out to Quinn. Sterling to Cronin, but they're standing up very quickly on him. He gets it back to Sterling. Sterling looks for the opening. It uh, was there, but Ross Gig closed it. And this is Cronin getting out from dummy half. And they take him to ground now. Here's Taylor. Now Price. Sterling was down on his haunches in back play. Muggleton's got the right idea. Breeze at your back. Why wouldn't you kick it on an early tackle? Now Levy has to take it back. Muggleton leads the chase, putting all players on side, and Taylor makes the tackle. And Sterling is still receiving attention way down the ground. There he is. On the halfway through Alexander to Simmons. Simmons puts the kick ahead, turns Ella around. Simmons goes ahead with Robinson, but Ella has come up with it. Sterling now falls back into the pivot. And here's Hunt. Sterling. Cronin. Jerd. Stand the man. He's made a dust. He's galloping inside Penrith territory. Muggledon flick passes to Grove. Look at the big man go. They won't stop Grove. He's a powerhouse of a man. The best winger in the world is in to score after Stan Jerd had run off a, a very neat pass. From M. Cronin. See it again. Sterling, Cronin. Short ball for, uh, for Stan Jerd. And uh, one of the most likable guys in the game. Took off down ground. Muggleton gave a beautiful flick pass, and that was it. That was about the end of the section. Ben Gonzalez trying to give him a start. And Levy, too, was trying to give him a start. But growth, you can't do that with him. Cronin started it all when he popped up a short pass to Jerd, and Jerd ran into a hole. The play should have stopped there when Gig missed a tackle on Jerd. Jerd then looked for support, and he found that support looming up on the outside in the form of Muggleton. Muggleton flicked the ball back inside to Growth, and I'm amazed at the way Growth was able to score this try. He had practically no sideline to work in, but he went through two tackles, and over he goes to score a tremendous try. You're looking at probably, and I said it in the commentary, I've got no reason to apologise or take it back, but the, I would say the best winger in the world in the minds of uh, people overseas as well as here in Australia. Michael Cronin. Big kick. He's missed it. Parramatta leading Penrith in the NEC big game after an Eric Growth special by four points to nil. Fed one. Oh, good tunnel. That, in fact, that ball came out between and inside the second rowers' inside feet. But, oh, there are Parramatta players lying all over the place. Uh, Kevin Roberts has called timeout immediately. He's talking to Wolf about a head-high tackle on Quinn. By Jove. Crash. Players went everywhere. Cronin went to ground, Quinn went to ground, and I think Taylor finished up on his back too, but Quinn has copped a head high, which has brought a caution and a penalty. Foul play, so... The first penalty in the game, is it? Thank you, Peter Fralingos. 15 minutes gone. Do you realise we've been watching perfect football teams for 15 minutes? <laughs> Stan Jurd. Gee. I didn't think this man could come back from the injury that he had uh, with the knee being in plaster for about oh, 10 weeks. Uh, he's not built for speed, Stan. He's built for comfort, really. Penalty to Parramatta. You shouldn't, you shouldn't give them kicks this easy anyway for Cronin. I didn't think uh, Stan Jer would, would come back as quick as this on the score of uh, fitness. Obviously, obviously, John Mann, he's planning to use him in the semi-final, so he's moved him into his first-grade team as quickly as possible to give him the match fitness, but also to give him the, uh, the opportunity to blend in with the other fellows. 
he's doing he's doing plenty of uh, huffing and puffing yes. at the moment. Let's say his first 40 minutes will be his strongest. Michael Cronin from almost in front with the breeze at his back. You'd like to take the short prices. He's got it. So Parramatta leading Penrith by six points to nil. You're watching the NEC big game. I hope you're enjoying it. 23 minutes of the first half to go. The Panthers with a lot of work in front of them, although I, I, I hasten to mind you of this breeze. To me, it's got about a six-point value. Here's Taylor. Sterling. Here's Growth. He got through one, but Brad Izzard did well enough to knock him off balance. Sterling, he's gone for that touchline again, and he's beaten them. He's found touch outside the 22 line. Penrose into the ground. Well, these are the right, uh, the right game tactics. Judicious kicking by Sterling. Rossman's medal Wednesday night. We'll have the exclusive cover of that for you. With some sports breaks into our normal programming Wednesday night. Covering the Rossman's. And then Wednesday week, we've got our own Daily Mirror Channel 10 Dally M Awards. And just looking at Greg Alexander, I wouldn't be surprised if he's on the, the stage at St. George Leagues Club on that night. Leave his kick. Gross taking his time with it. That sun would have been into Eric Gross' eyes then. You're probably saying to yourself, why would he let it bounce? I dare to say that he, um, he couldn't see it. Sterling. Price. Wars. Cronin. Coming in and taking the first pass off the ruck a lot. Taylor, he finds an opening. He's gone inside the 32. Here comes the defence. He'll have to pass. He doesn't. His only support was Steve Edge. And how many times do you see Edge there trailing behind some speedy back? Here's Sterling. Jenkins, get off his left foot. Looking for an opening. And the little man is down. Eight metres outside the Penrith line. But there's problems here for Penrith. They were in small print, but now they're in capital letters. Taylor's bomb. Pressure again for the Panthers. Oh, it's a try for the Zipson man. Ella has scored. Oh, how easy. Well, Bill, I, I said it just two seconds ago. The problems are pretty big for Penrith. They certainly are. Parramatta started the game enthusiastically in the first few minutes and they've carried it on. And here you can see it was a simple try. Taylor put the bomb up. It was a spot-on bomb. It was a good chase by Ella. The Penrith had plenty of defence there, but they just didn't have anyone that could get high enough and get the ball. Up goes Ella in Australian rules fo fashion and down he comes for the four points. Well, talking of bombs and the... Uh headlines they've occupied through the year you know there's nothing wrong with a bomb or a kick in rugby league providing the rules are enforced correctly I think it's worth persevering with but then again there's not many people that, that would agree with me Steve Ella scores a try off a bomb quite spectacular stuff really and uh, Sterling again is getting attention just inside the 32 meter line well if they lost him I, I'd go on record as saying they'd lose any chance of retaining the Premiership. Conversion by Cronin. Parramatta leading by 12 points to nil. Penrith win it. Robinson, oh, he's made a mistake on the first and Parramatta's come up with it and Taylor's taken off and given it to Price and gone to Cronin and now it's gone to Ella. He's uh, inside a man. He can't pass. That was good work by Brett Lobb. I'll tell you what, it had to be because it was absolutely shut the gate if he was able to pass. Look at Parramatta. They came up with a ball from broken play and they know exactly what to do. Cronin calls Peter Wynn inside. The big second row is looking for the line. He, he's uh, pulled down about two metres out. It just took him a little bit long to get the signal from Cronin to go inside. Not that he probably needed a signal. It's gone out to Neil Hunt now. He passes. It's over to Peter Sterling. Sterling doing some... Uh, 
some light footing in there. Price is tackled now. Price plays it. Taylor runs it and passes. Sterling sweeps it. It's gone to Muggleton. Gets through one. Spirals around. Comes back inside the 10 meter line. Four tackles gone for the Eels. Muggleton plays it. Edge is the man who passes to Quinn. Quinn to Cronin. The run around is on, but uh, Cronin holds it back. Then he just uh, flirts with danger. Gets a one hand away for Price. And Price is tackled on five. And here comes the bomb now from the Eels. Out to Sterling. Up goes the, the kick. Mears is after it. Uh, Gonzalez has put it down. And oh, Mears. He passed to Gross and Gross put it down. But it would have been a try. And now Penrith have gone in touch. Well, that's Eric Gross. <laughs> Very typical Eric Gross stuff. Scores a blockbuster in the try and then he, he puts down uh, the easiest of passes. You could almost feel the sigh of relief from uh, Mark Levy when he dropped the ball. Sterling knocking on at the back of the scrub. Penrith come up with the penalty. Feet across. Ladies and gentlemen, the previous attendance record of Penrith Park was 16,478. Levy finding the line just outside the quarter. Well, of course, the, the, the crowd roars at these grounds every time flash scores come through from other grounds. Um, and I guess we're going to hear a lot of those noises today for the television viewer quite often they're they're worrying thinking to themselves that maybe they've missed something on the television cameras but that roar by the way had nothing to do with progress scores it's a ground record here at Penrith Park and the crowd loves it 20 and a half thousand Neil Hunt did they get 20 and a half thousand in here Win across the ground for Cronin. Quick hands. It's gone to Muggleton. Muggleton will call Growth inside. There's the flick pass from Muggleton. It's picked up by Growth. Cronin's, I don't know how he held it, but he's got it. Gee, Muggleton's throwing some flick passes out there. He's really turning on some fancy stuff. Muggleton out to Sterling. Here's Mayers going up hard out wide. Didn't go very far, though. Ray Price is the dummy. And Price, he's gone through. He's picked up Steve Edge. Here comes Paul Taylor. That's him with the ball. I saw Ron Quinn held back. This is Ella. Oh, he's ruled the pass, went forward. Roberts has ruled that the ball went forward. I must admit, I thought he was about to blow up a penalty because Quinn was definitely, definitely pulled back out of it. back live and this man is Robinson after Penrith had won the scrum. Parramatta are stringing together a lot of passes uh, when they're in possession of the ball and when they start to do that they're very difficult to contain and dangerous and Penrith's going to have to do something about it or we're going to finish up with a, uh, a big score against them. Gee you know as you look ahead to the grand final this year it's it, I think it's going to be played between Saints Canterbury or Parramatta you don't have your road scholar to work that out and that's not knocking the fourth and fifth sides whoever they might be but Gee, we're going to see some razzle-dazzle stuff. The Mortimers, the Morrises, the Haddocks, the Sterlings. It's going to have everything. That was a very adventurous shot for line by Mark Levy, but it's out on the four, and this puts them in a terrible situation. 18 metres out. They uh, will have the feed and the head against them. 12-0, Parramatta tries to Eller and Growth. Sterling to work it. They've won it again, Parramatta. G. Edge is getting some clean heels when Sterling feeds. And this is Ella. Sterling wants it to the left. Here he is. Run around with his lookalike, Taylor. Taylor steps. Look at him. G. He's about 10 stone 7, Paul Taylor, but he plays the game about 5 stone above his weight. He's an incredible little man. Sterling, Price on the run round. Loses the, uh, the footing. Roy Simmons and Matt Goober making the tackle. This is Edge. Now Sterling again. Muggledon. Muggledon tries to back into the defence. Cronin's the dummy half now. Across to Sterling. He puts the grubber kick through. He tries to hurdle them. Robert said, I saw everything. Play on. Penrith ball. Levy. 
10 meter line penrith's under the ground that's where we're at roy simmons head down bulldogging talking of the bulldogs they put on some razzle dazzle stuff yesterday didn't they but each, each of those top three sides, that's the point I was trying to make, Bill, they're all capable of putting on the razzle-dazzle, aren't they? They are. Well, Canterbury yesterday probably opened up more than any game we've seen in this year, and I think that's a sign of things to come. Here's Taylor using growth. Oh, gee, here's a problem, but little Robinson went low, and he he got the, the just reward by going low on growth. Taylor pulled down by Gig. Six and a quarter minutes of the first half remaining. You're watching the NEC big game. Cronin, a dummy to Sterling. He cuts the, uh, the play back to the, the blind, and he's there to back up edge and give the ball to Muggledon. Muggledon got Hunt on the inside together with Taylor. Muggledon centre kicks. Taylor goes after it with Levy and Goodwin, and Goodwin sweeps it over the dead ball line. Beautiful play by Michael Cronin. The crowd goes back to their seat. But beautiful play by Cronin. He switched the point of the attack and then went back to the blind to support Steve Edge, who looked to his right edge, and he said, that's good, Michael. <laughs> Let's go to the blind, but there's nobody here. And then Cronin swept around, gave him an attack support, and then it was to Muggleton and then that. And this man bringing it back as Mayors. And that's the way I'm sure rugby league fans like to see him run. Instead of thinking about popping it, he's taking it more up to the defence line and hurting them by making them tackle him. Short ball from Price to Quinn. Quinn tackled 20 metres out. Right in front of the uprights, and Penrith cannot afford to let Parramatta in again. Price lofts it back to Gross. Gross out to Cronin. Cronin calls Gross around. Here goes the big man. He's heading for the corner. He's away from Izzard. And Alexander and Lobb combined to bring him down. But it's a thrill a minute as the big uh, Eric Gross performs some of his... Unbelievable uh, strength and power runs as the penalty goes to Parramatta. With the ball in his hand, Derry Growth would be the most dangerous footballer in the world. At times, we, uh, he tends to go to sleep in the game and, and you can't find him. But when he gets the ball, there's no doubt he's a marvellous footballer. And uh, really, that break was initiated by him. He backed around Cronin, got the ball back and made a break and almost came up with a try. And that's forced now a penalty to Parramatta. Yeah, and uh, to me, Bill, it's a very important two-pointer, if Cronin gets it, of course. But uh, I, I valued this breeze at around six. I wouldn't like to go any further than that, would you? No, I think that'd, about, that'd just about see it out. And of course, if Cronin gets this, he's going to put them two converted tries plus two points in front. And look at that crowd, 20 and a half thousand, a ground record at Penrith Park. Good on you, Penrith. Cronin's kick, he's missed it. Back to the halfway for the restart. The Eels leading by, or back to the 22, I should say, for the restart. 12-0, Parramatta. I was reading with interest where Parramatta were thinking of um, using Penrith Park and not Belmore next year. It'll be their last year, we're led to believe, by the authorities. And, of course, Dennis Fitzgerald is fully aware that there are more Parramatta people live west of Parramatta who would probably come to a Penrith Park location and wouldn't go to Belmore. I'm wondering whether Fitzgerald is uh, on the brink of making a decision to come here next year in view of this crowd today. Let me tell you, they're not all Penrith supporters. I'd say one in one in two. It's an even split here today. Jerd puts it down. And the tighter Stan gets, the more prone he is to make those kind of mistakes. Well, errors creep into everyone's game as they get tired, but this is a very important scrum for Penrith. They're only a couple of minutes to go before half-time. To have any chance in the match, they've got to come up with a try. Alexander tackled about uh, 25 metres out from the Parramatta line. That was bad positional play by Alexander's centre. You might have seen him offer, him offer the ball to Ken Wolfe, the player with it now. But Wolfe was a mile away, and Alexander, in these conditions, opted not to pass, but it just jinked the attack, and it's let Parramatta's defensive line get set. Playing the ball now is Brad Brewer. Here's Matt Goodwin running decoy. Simmons goes blind. Clements goes hard. And they're about 18 metres out now. I'm looking at the timepiece. Penrith have two minutes in which to put some respectability into this scoreline coming up to the break. 
Five tackles are gone now for the Panthers. And it's with Mark Levy for the bomb. A high one. The breeze brings it back. Mears gets under it with Price. It's been uh, knocked down to Taylor. And Taylor takes it to ground. 15 out from his own line. And so it's Edge looking around for runners, but there weren't any runners. And Edge gets to the 22 line. Now it's with Sterling. Short pass for Ella. Ella pulled down by Brad Izzard. Eric! Here's Cronin. He's having a good game today, Michael. He's uh, standing very strongly and getting it into Quinn onto Muggledon. Muggledon tackled. Pulls him down, 30 seconds out from the half-time break. And this is Cronin, just hands it off to Taylor. They're all jumbled up there, Parramatta, standing on top of one another. And it's with Peter Wynn now, who passes to Sterling across to Hunt. But it's, it's very much a case of them. They're standing still and playing each player as it comes and, and not treating any one of them with a great deal of urgency. This is Taylor. Very shabby stuff here from the Eels. A lot of passing. The views about four tackles up and gone nowhere. All for the lack of a bit of team formation. Taylor now to play it. The halftime siren will sound. There's the indication of uh, last tackle from Roberts. It's been swept across to Cronin. Cronin on to Muggledon. They're not beaten yet. Muggledon puts it up. Growth has come from an onside position. Levy's underneath it. Takes it safely. That's the end of the section for 40 minutes anyway. With Parramatta going to Oranges. Leading Penrith by 12 points to nil before a ground record crowd at Penrith of 20 and a half thousand. And as they take a break, we'll take a break and be back. Welcome back to the second half of the NEC big game. But first up, the two Parramatta tries that has taken them to a lead of 12 nil. It was Jurd running off a perfect pass from Cronin. He galloped over the halfway, the big fellow. He picked up Muggledon. He flicked past to Growth. And uh, Eric Growth, well, you just can't give him a start. If you do, he's almost bound to give you a beating, and that's exactly what he did here. That was after 11. This is what happened at 19. It was just the orthodox up and under, if you like. And it was off the boot of Paul Taylor, and Steve Eller just flies higher than anybody and comes down with the ball. Parramatta leading Penrith, 12-0 at halftime. Mark Levy sends it down to Peter Sterling and Neil Hunt brings it back. Just updating the situation for you. Parramatta leading 12-0. And uh, Connor made that tackle in 17. He's on for Brad Izzard. And Izzard took a very heavy knock in the early minutes of the game. He's been replaced by this fellow. His Jurd. Whilst ever that scoreline reads 12 nil or thereabouts, I'm pretty sure John Money will leave Jurd out there as a conditioning exercise. His win. And uh, he's tackled midway between the 22 and halfway, his own into the field. Spread for Sterling to kick between the fullback and the winger, which gives his runners plenty of time to get down there. In fact, he's coming down in front of everybody together with Taylor. And now Gonzalez takes it back, but he's cut down by Steve Eller. Wolf. Brett Kenny sitting next to coach John Money and third grade coach Bertie Bass was there too. Uh, the pleasure of the company of both Brett Kenny and Benny Elias on Friday at the Variety Club annual sportsman's dinner which is a tremendously successful exercise by the Variety Club for 
the handicapped kids of this state. This is Mark Levy. I'll tell you what, Rugby League came out of it on top. Players galore there to support variety, and I had the pleasure of lunch with Brett and Benny, and Brett was there with his arm in a sling. I don't think he'll be right for the semi-finals. That's my opinion. Quinn, win. In fact, Benny offered to cut his meat up for him. Here's Gerd. Sterling. Taylor. Quinn. Muggledon. Cronin. Hand off. Knock down. Penrith have got it. It'll be a scrum, and I think he'll order that it was a Penrith knock on, so Parramatta should have the feed here. Scrums and penalties. 8 7 scrums to Parramatta. 3 1 the penalties to Parramatta. We didn't have a penalty after 15 minutes of the game. And Parramatta coming up with this scrum victory. Quinn going across the ground. Looking as though he's going to pick Taylor up on his inside. It didn't eventuate. Here's Peter Wynn. Now, Cronin's gone to the blind. Price is coming hard. There's Price with it now. Cronin and Ella are stout with growth on the right. They may well come right, although Sterling is standing to the left. There he is. Now it's Jurd. Coming off a standing start, he's not nearly as effective when he hasn't got some momentum going for him. Look at Edge. Taking him down to the 22. Five gone. They might push the ball here. Sterling. Oh, Quinn. Flick pass. Oh, Cronin had the chance. In fact, you could almost see it coming, Bill, couldn't you? They had all their top guns stacked out on the right. It was pretty obvious they weren't going to kick. But it was uh, a case of a flick pass from Quinn. And his travelling companion couldn't take it. Stealing the ball. That's the way Robert saw it. Levy takes the line finder. That's a good kick by Mark Levy. 12 metres into Parramatta's area. Incidentally, we'll have Rugby League 84 at its normal time tomorrow night for Sydney viewers. But as from the following week, we're going to the same time but on a Tuesday night this is Goodwin it'll give us a chance to give you the semi-final teams and do a lot more by having it on the Tuesday nights during the semi-finals long ball out to gig he calls his winger inside lob does that give oh. pass back to gig he floats it over the top for Alexander Penrith have got to do something soon it seems now is the time Alexander is Clements Clements is going strongly but he's pulled down Two metres out from the Parramatta line. Alexander, pulled down by Edge. Four tackles gone for, Pan for the Penrith Panthers. Across and wide to Levy. Bullet-like pass to Fenton. He's only got a pass up. Gig. Love try. A try to Brett Love. Have a look at the touch judge. If we can get a shot of him. Brett Love has scored. Uh, I'm simply, simply going to tell you that the touch judge was standing on the touch line in goal. That's his indication without even uttering a word to the referee that it's a fair go. Long ball from Levy. Took play out to Fenton. Gig may have passed a fraction early and Lobb goes in for the try. This try was a long time coming, but it puts the Panthers back in with some hope. It was two or three long passes from the base of the ruck. Found Fenton out wide in the centres, filling in. He fired the pass back on the gig. Gig passed to his winger, Gonzalez, and over he goes for a very good Penrith chain passing try. Here he comes. He's got 
the length and the height that it's just offline. 12 points to four. You're watching the NEC big game. That's Connor. Here's Clements. Now Levy. Gross going back for it was Taylor. Now Taylor is going to use Gross. Here he goes. Oh, good tackle. Good tackle by Craig Connor. He just cut his legs from under him. As if to say, I don't care who you are. Cop this. Ella. Tackler Gonzalez. Neil Hunt. Sterling. Mears. No, it's a cutout ball. It's gone to Quinn. Peter Wynn, Ray Price, Peter Wynn, John Muggledon, good stuff. Inside goes Ella, outside is Growth. Muggledon, he'll find Growth. Now his trouble, Alexander pursues. He passes to Ella. That's a great try. That's a great try scored by Parramatta. Steve Ella picks up his second. Eric Growth making another long run down the line. Greg Alexander did very well. But this is where it all happened. It was simply run around and support football. Peter Wynn and Michael Cronin prominent. John Muggledon grabbing this opportunity back in the top grade with both hands. He was taken out of it. Gross was taken out of it by Alexander. And then it was Steve Eller, Johnny on the spot, and Parramatta goes further in front. The try all started with a run around back in the Parramatta quarter. Mar Muggledon carried play on and he found the ever-present Eric Growth back inside. We can see here what a tremendous player Growth is. He's able to keep his hands free and a good tackle by Greg Alexander. Parramatta were not to be denied of the try. Ella took the play back on and he touches down for the try. Gee, Growth left his mark on this game. So has Cronin. Cronin's kicked it from out very wide. Parramatta... Leading now by 18 points to four in front of this huge crowd. Bergman, Peter Bergman, I think it is, isn't it? Yes, on the sidelines for Penrith. Well, I was one of the people who thought that maybe Parramatta's run had come to an end with some of the football they've been putting together lately. And when you think that Brett Kenny's not out there today, you've got to be very careful before you even think or say that, but I'm already guilty of it. But today they've done some things that uh, indicate to me that they might be just putting it together at the right time. Played by Connor, passed by Alexander, Fenton, the bearded second rower, takes it ahead. Oh, body slam by Mayers. The crowd appealing for a penalty. Play back to Simmons. This was the tackle. Let's see it again in slow-mo. And Mayers goes in with that swinging arm and then drops him to the ground. Well, I don't think there was anything really amiss with that tackle. Alexander kicks ahead. It might come off for him. Oh! He's going to put the scrum down. He's doing everything he knows, Greg Alexander, and I'll tell you what, he's doing a mighty fine job out there for a youngster. He doesn't care who they are. He's just about tried every trick in the book. Probably tricks that he's learned by watching fellows like P. Sterling and S. Mortimer. Win. Hand off, down for Taylor. Little hit and spin. 32 metres out from the Parramatta line. Here's Stephen Edge galloping into a hole. Making about 12 metres. Now Peter Wynn decides to hit it up himself and he reaches the halfway line and see they've used four tackles and they've made about 40 metres and that's, that's really a lot of ground to make in four tackles, all forward plays. Quinn shrugs off a would-be tackles. 
Now he's pulled down by Connor. Played back for Price. They keep up a wrap to the left, and it's Sterling drawing them, committing them, giving it to Cronin. Cronin inside for Hunt. Hunt's been uh, unable to take it, and the referee is going to put a scrum down. Bergman going on for Penrith in 16, and Clements, the number nine, is coming off. Penrith winning the scrum. Robinson turns, finds Alexander. He's into an opening, Alexander. Then he floats a cutout pass. It's almost out of the manual, the stuff that we're watching from Alexander here in the second half. I know coaches hate commentators saying it, but just put his name down. He, he is a star of the future, Greg Alexander. He's got everything, this fella. Levy taking the touch finder. 18 to 4, a good kick by Mark Levy. The tap will be taken 15 out from the Parramatta line. Simmons. Hello, I saw that move put on by one Greg Brentnell back in 1975 playing for Riverina against South Sydney at Leichhardt. It's a long time between drinks if you're waiting to see the move reenacted. Ten years precisely from the time that Brentnell did it at Leichhardt in an Amco Cup and Simmons has done it here on television today. It may have well been done again, but I haven't seen it on television. Neil Hunt. Brentnell and Mortimer were the two that worked the magic from memory on that night. It's a cross now for Quinn, a hand down for um, Muggleton, but he's been snapped out of it with a good tackle around the bootlaces by Fenton. Sterling says, let's get out of here, but he's kicked it straight to Ben Gonzalez. Now, this will be an interesting chase. Mayor's chasing Gonzalez, and the big front rower will not give up. And then Paul Taylor comes across and axes him. This is Levy. And say what you like about Paul Mears. He loves a chase. Good one. Pull down by Mears low. Win up the top. About 35 metres out. This fella is Simmons. Across to Connor. Then to Robinson. And Neil Hunt has just pulled off a good winger's tackle out there. And I think Billy Anderson will be the first to tell me that he, he had to make it. He did exactly what a good winger should do. It was a try saver. Penrith had the overlap. Hunt read play particularly well, and he came in and made a ball and all tackle and stopped the progress of the play continuing. I see uh, Glenn Mansfield warming up for Parramatta, this young man that uh, has done a couple of good jobs for Parramatta as a replacement. And Matt Goodwin got a little caution there from Roberts. Levy takes the, the kick for touch. Mayors will be coming off. Out through Gig, Levy, Alexander. He's into another opening. He's found support. Kenny Wolf. Wolf scores. Right under the black dot. Oh dear. Parramatta have been opened up on numerous occasions by Greg Alexander in this second half. Absolute blinder in the second half is the young Greg Alexander. And he simply, he took them apart like a, like a surgeon's scalpel. He just went straight through them. Goodness gracious me, he's, I reckon he's given John Money plenty of headaches. And Ken Wolf picks up a try under the dot. Well, I'm sure that Greg Alexander is not 100% fit, but it doesn't matter. I don't know about him being a star of the future. I think he's a star of the present. You can see here he beats the first man with a step off the left foot, the second man with a step off the left foot, then fires the pass back inside the wolf. He can see the try line in front of him, and there's no way that he's going to be stopped, and in he goes to get Penrith back into the match. Mark Levy taking the, pen, the uh, conversion from right in front. He couldn't miss this. Ooh. He didn't. He got it. I tell you what, though, Levy took plenty of dirt. Parramatta 18, Penrith 10. We've still got ourselves a ball game here. 
Parramatta by eight points. Just under 18 to go. Taylor throws the dummy. They all buy it. Play is 35 metres out from the Penrith line. To the blind for win. Oh, he's gone through them. Oh, gee, they were two bad attempts at tackle. Peter Wynn passes inside. And uh, it's come down to Ken Wolfe for Penrith. Peter Wynn. He went straight through two Penrith would-be tacklers. I missed, uh, I missed their identity, and I think you'd be doing them a favour by, by missing them because, gee, Peter Wynn cut them to pieces. Here's Neil Hunt. I sometimes wonder about Peter Wynn. He's a tremendously likeable guy, and I think he's a, he's a wholehearted 80-minute footballer, but, Bill, he sometimes gets lost when it comes to the art of passing and when to pass. Peter's a very good ball runner. He's one of those players that beats his man on the outside and he's got enough pace to go on with it when he's broken the initial line. But uh, I think his defensive rate's good. If there's any errors in his game, it's probably just the timing of passes. But uh, I don't think there are many footballers that are complete oh. to do a lot. Goodwin went in with a swinging arm. I think it was mainly, if you like, a claw to try and get the ball. Sterling kicks in general play. Levy's got it covered. But uh, what looked like a punch from Goodman, I'm sure it was a, a grab or a claw for the ball. It's with Simmons. Here's Alexander, now Fenton. Scrum, 32 metres out from the Penrith line. Ian McCall running the line for Kevin Roberts. My director, Alan Catt, telling me that Sterling and Lobb had a bit of a swing at each other a few minutes back. Off camera, it was only a preliminary bout. <laughs> no goal. <laughs> Peter Wynn trying to shrug off the tackles. Blindside for Taylor. And he gets back inside, but uh, Bergman picks him up in the jump, uh, number 16 jumper. Sterling through to Quinn, holds it up and gets it to Ella. Ella's running high, wide and handsome at the moment. He comes back inside. He picks up Neil Hunt. He gives it to Ray Price. And Price will play it. They're setting up to hit the blind here, Parramatta, but Sterling wants it on the open. That's where it is. Oh, they've all gone left, right and centre, and John Muggerton said thank you. Passes to Cronin. Cronin scores. Well, there are some boos amongst the crowd. They've obviously seen something that I didn't see. But um, Penrith were made to open right up by the Eels here. They looked as they were setting it up to go blindside. Price got up, played the ball, and it went out to Sterling, and he just jinxed. Maybe that's what they're talking about. Maybe they thought there was a little shepherd there from Taylor, but I, I didn't see it that way. And Cronin just ambles across. Let's see it on the head-on and see if there is a, is a shepherd here. Well, Parramatta made it look all so easy. There probably is a hint of a shepherd. I think all second-hand players have that little tinge of shepherd about them, but Muggledon did well. He ran into the hole. He hard, could have scored on his own. Unselfishly threw the ball to Cronin, and in he goes for the try to seal the game. Cronin hits it. It looks all right. He's just missed it. Back for the restart. 22 to 10. Peter Falingas is just pointing to the, the exits. There's plenty getting into the exits. Plenty of fans. I think, I think it has to be said that uh, though they're going home early, a lot of the Penrith supporters. Um, 
They'd be rightly proud of the Panthers in 1984. He's done a great job for them, Sheens, Tim Sheens. And though they might have fallen just out of the top five, it's as close as they've ever gone. They've given it their best ever shot. And uh, I think it's a sign of the times, a sign of the future. Let's hope so, because it's such a huge area. And overflowing in rugby league talent. And most of it that he's got out there running around the park these days has been grown in their own backyard. That's what I like about them. That's the turnover, and it's played by Penrith. It's gone across to Alexander, and it's on to Fenton, and now to Gig, and Gig turns it back inside for Fenton. Fenton gives it back inside to Alexander. He comes across and torpedoes it out to Wolf, and Wolf is tackled, nailed by Peter Wynn right on the halfway line. Alexander, Robinson, Price the tackle. Alexander, Fenton, Bergman. Inside for Connor. Inside again, but it's to ground for Taylor. Edge, Sterling, Muggledon. Quinn, Cronin, Ella. Ella, he's had a big game too, but as I've said before during the year, I think Steve's lost a couple of metres of pace. Gee, I, 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 I just keep running into arguments with particularly Peter Flingos on that one, but I just think he's lost a couple of yards. Here's Jurd, 35 metres out from the Penrith line. Sterling, Price is the chaser. No pressure here for Levy. If you can say that a bomb doesn't represent pressure. Oh dear, this might... No, it hasn't brought a penalty. I thought it might have. Dangerous tackle. Phelan is on the sideline for Parramatta in jumper number 23. Fenton. Five for Penrith are gone. Oh, Alexander's been trapped with the ball. Turnover. Well, that's the only blemish on the youngsters game that I can find. Jurd. Probably get a rest here, I would think, Jurd, with feeling on the sidelines. Here's Taylor. Busy again today. You've said it before, Bill, you'd like to have a few like him in your team. Just keeps working all day in defence and in attack. He's one of those fellows that backs up but keeps backing up. Good work by Quinn. Hunt inside off. <laughs> Brandon's put it down again. I think it's hit him on the, uh, on the Lionel Rose. Let's have a look and see where this ball's hit Michael Cronin. This is the second chance he's had to score. He's good. Yes, it got him right on the point of the nose. The wind comes off. And Brandon Lee in 22 goes on for Penrith. Edge comes off for Parramatta. So does Jurd. It's like a change of shift. Mosley. Sterling, Quinn, Cronin, finds Quinn backing him up. Sterling, Mosley, across to Stewart, now with Mansfield. So Parramatta in one game have used all their recognised hookers. Ed Stewart and Mosley. And uh, this has found touch, and I'm just wondering whether it came off Levy or not. He made every effort to get his hand out of the way when he realised the ball was going out to ensure that they did get the feed and the loose head. Alexander. 
Levy. That's out to Fenton. And uh, Cronin and Quinn make the tackle jointly. We must be looking at, what, two minutes? <laughs> That's my man from the Daily Mirror. He reckons there's one and three quarters to go. Calling for accuracy. 22 is Doran. Looks like we might be seeing one another again on Tuesday night, Ray. And this man is Robinson. Short ball for Levy. Levy giving it off to Simmons. Simmons tackled by Muggleton and Mansfield. Yes, we'll have a look at how they finished in 1984. At the, that's a charge down by Mansfield. The other two boys are on side. And uh, it's still play on, but now it's going to be a play the ball and a fresh set of six tackles for Penrith. Yeah, we'll have a look and see how they finished and who plays who and whatever at the end of this match in a few minutes' time. Simmons, geez, a worker, Roy Simmons. Good sharp passing, and Levy gets outside the 22, wasn't held, got up, went again. He finds uh, Brandon Lee in the 20. This is Gig, and taken by Hunt over on the far wing. Out through Robinson and Alexander and Bergman. Long ball out to Gonzalez and taken by Cronin. And now it's with Alexander. Simmons, he decides to change things around, so he puts the kick in. Ella can't take it. Price has got it. Price is into a hole. He's tackled about 15 metres into Penrith area. Paramount are leading by 12 points, 22 to 10. Phelan gets out from dummy half, finds Mosley. Mosley loves to look for holes and gaps just up behind the play of the ball. This is Phelan. So these couple of fresh Parramatta forwards taking it upon themselves just to take these last few tackles out. Here's Mosley in the 21. 16 is Ken Stewart. Muggleton coming for a run, finding Ella, and then Taylor. Taylor's put down by Alexander, and there's five, and Taylor has cramped, I think. Let's hope that's all it is. Yeah, he's cramped up, Paul Taylor. Alexander's having a close look at the treatment that Taylor's getting. <laughs> As if to say, you all right now? Sterling bombs it. This is a lot of pressure here for Levy, because that man Ella was up above them again. But there's the end of the match. The siren sounding. Penrith bowing out of the 1984 race for the semi-finals hands today of Parramatta by 22 points to 10. Parramatta's points, Growth and Cronin a try each. Ella, two tries. Cronin, three goals. And for Penrith, Brett Lobb and Ken Wolf, their tries. Mark Levy, a goal. And so Parramatta advances to the Sydney Cricket Ground for the semi-finals next weekend. Penrith exit from the 84 Winfield Cup but they've gone down gallantly and easily their best performance since joining the big league let's go to the dressing rooms in just a moment after this break to see who's taken out the man of the match award in this match at Penrith Park today today's man of the match was the Parramatta fullback Paul Tyler was that a better performance than Parramatta have produced in the last few weeks? Well, in the last few weeks, we've been down in our defence. Uh, we've always had the attack, but our defence, we weren't hitting with our shoulders. It was all grabbing. And today's performance shows that, you know, we still have got the defence to win a premiership. Some critics have suggested that Parramatta have been just waiting for the semi-finals to start. Have you had that feeling? No, not really. Uh, we've just been in a bit of a rut. And today, uh, I think we're, we're playing premiership football at the moment. Well, for taking today's award, it's my pleasure to present you with a cheque for $500, courtesy of NEC and Electronic Sales and Rentals. Thanks very much. Lots of thanks, sponsors and Channel 10.
obviously John Money's included you in the side for many reasons, but what do you see as your main role in the Paramount attack with the semi-finals approaching? I think uh, I'm, a, I'm a bit able to take a bit of pressure off Curtis Sterling. Uh, certainly uh, for a while there, you know, he was the only one who was playing the ball, and they uh, were just sending defensive players straight up to him. With me there, well, hopefully it gives them two people to think about, and that might open a few gaps for Curtis, as it did today.